Good day everyone. This video will give you an introduction on modeling and simulation. So let's start. What is simulation? Simulation in general is to pretend that one deals with a real thing while really working with an imitation. In operations research, the imitation is a computer model of the simulated reality. For example, a flight simulator on a PC is also a computer model of some aspects of the flight. It shows on the screen the controls and what the pilot is supposed to see from the cockpit. Now, based on this example, we can say that simulation is used before an existing system is altered or a new system is built to reduce the chances of failure to meet specifications to imitate unforeseen bottlenecks to prevent under or over utilization of resources and to optimize system performance. Simulation can be used to answer questions like what is the best design for a new telecommunications network? What are the associated resources requirements? How will a telecommunication network perform when the traffic load increases by 50%? How will a new routing algorithm affect its performance? Which network protocol optimizes network performance? And what will, the, uh, what will be the impact of a link failure? Next is modeling. Modeling is the process of producing a model. A model is a representation of the construction and working of some system of interest. A model is, is a description of some system intended to predict what happens if a certain action are taken. A model is similar to but simpler than the systems uh, or system it represents. One purpose of a model is to enable the analyst to predict the effects of changes to the system. Now, why do we use models? Let us take again the flight simulator on the PC as an example. Flying in a simulator is safer and cheaper than the real airplane. For precisely this reason, models are used. It is very costly dangerous and often impossible to make experiments with real systems, provided that the model are adequate descriptions of reality, experimenting with them can save money, suffering, and even time. So when do we use a simulation or simulation? The use of simulation becomes apparent as soon as a number of factors are considered to influence the behavior of a system. Many approaches, especially statistical ones, are available to analyze interactions in systems. Simulation modeling constitutes a unique approach that it enables the, uh, the, the simultaneous handling and range of such factors and see their influence on the behavior of a system. The next is how is simulation performed? Simulations may be performed manually. Most often, however, the system model is written either as a computer program or as some kind of input into sim uh, simulator software, as you can see on the example illustration. So, 
So, what are the different types of simulator? A simulator is a device or a computer program or a system that performs simulation. A simulation is a method for implementing a model over time. There are three types of commonly used simulations. The live, virtual, and constructive. Now, live is a simulation involving real people operating real system. So, uh, in the live simulations, it involves individual or groups, may use actual equipment, should provide a similar area of operations, should be close to replicating the actual activity. The second type is the virtual. Simulation involving real people operating sim uh, simulated system Virtual simulations inject human in the loop in a central role by exercising. It involves motor control skills, decision skills, and communication skills. The third is the constructive simulation. Now, constructive simulation involves simulated people operating simulated systems. Real People can stimulate or make inputs but are not involved in determining the outcomes. Constructive simulation offers the ability to analyze concepts, predict possible outcomes, stress large organizations, make measurements, generate statistics, and perform analysis. We now go to developing a simulation model. Simulation model consists of the following components. System entities, input variables, performance measures, and functional relationships. Simulation modeling comprises of the following steps. The first step is identifying the problem. When uh, in step one, uh, enumerate problems with an existing system, produce requirements for a proposed system. Step two, formulate the problem. This means that select the bounds of the system the problem or a part thereof to be studied. Define overall objective of the study and a few specific issues to be addressed. We also need to define performance measures, quantitative criteria on the basis of which different system configurations will be compared and ranked. We have to identify also briefly at this stage the uh, configurations of interest and formulate hypotheses about system performance. We also need to decide the time frame of the study. Example will be the model used for one-time decision or over a period of time on a regular basis. And lastly, identify the end user of the simulation model. The third step is collect the process real system data. This means that collect data on system specifications, input variables, as well as performance of the uh, existing system. Step 4. Formulate and develop a model. In step 4, developing semantics and network diagrams of the system, translate these conceptual models to simulation software acceptable form, verify that the simulation model executes as intended. 
Step 5, validate the model. This means that we need to compare the model's performance under known conditions with the performance of the real system. Perform statistical interference test and get the model examined by system experts. Assess the confidence that the end user places on the model and address problems if there are any. Lastly, document model for future use. Document objectives, assumptions, and input variables in detail. The next topic is what are the benefits of simulation modeling and analysis? According to uh, practitioners, simulation modeling and analysis is one of the most frequently used operations, research techniques. When used judiciously, simulation modeling and analysis makes it possible to First, obtain a better understanding of the system by developing a mathematical model of a system of interest and observing the system's operation in detail over long periods of time. Next, test hypotheses about the, simul uh, about the system for feasibility. Next, we have compressed time to observe certain phenomena over long periods or expand time to observe a complex phenomenon in detail. Study the effects of certain information, organizational, environmental, and policy changes on the operation of a system by altering the system's model. This can be done without disrupting the real system and significantly reduces the risk of experimenting with the real system. Lastly, experiment with new or unknown situations about which only weak information is available. Another benefit of simulation modeling analysis is identify the driving variables ones that performance measures are most sensitive to and the interrelationships among them. Next, another bottlenecks in the flow of entities or information. Next is, use multiple performance metrics for analyzing system configuration. Another is, employ a system approach to problem solving. And lastly, develop well-designed and robust systems and reduce system development time. We now go to our last topic, which is the pitfalls of guard against uh, pitfalls to guard against in simulation. Simulation can be a time-consuming and complex exercise for modeling through output analysis that necessitates the involvement of residents, experts, and decision makers in the entire process. Following is a checklist of pitfalls to guard against. First, unclear objective. Second, using simulation when analytic solution is appropriate. Next is invalid model. 
Another is simulation model is too complex or too simple. Next is erroneous assumptions. Another is undocumented assumptions. This is extremely important and it is strongly suggested that assumptions made at each stage of the simulation modeling and analysis exercise by documented thoroughly. Another is using the wrong input probability distribution. Next is replacing a distribution by its means. Next is using the wrong performance measure. Next is bugs in the simulation program. Another is using standard statistical formulas that assume independence in simulation output analysis. Next is initial bias in output data. Another is making one simulation run for a configuration. Next is poor schedule and budget planning. And the last, poor communication among the personnel involved in the simulation study. And that concludes this lesson. Thanks for listening.